What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to make a bomber jacket from scratch. Before I jump into the tutorial, if you just want to see the finished product, you can click on the screen right now or skip to this time of the video. Otherwise, let's get straight into the tutorial. First things first, I'll be going over all the tools and materials that you're going to need. Starting off with the tools, you're going to need a sewing machine with straight stitch and zigzag stitch, a rotary cutter with a cutting board, a regular pair of scissors, a regular ruler, a regular measuring tape, a bunch of pins, an iron, a pack of construction paper to make templates, and marking tools. For the materials, you're going to need a sweater that fits you well, two yards of nylon fabric, two yards of satin fabric or any type of lining material, one yard of any type of fabric that you want to use for the sleeves, one yard of ribbed knit fabric, one jacket zipper, two short zippers if you want to add pockets, which is totally optional, you don't need to get these two zippers, and two yards of quilter bat. That's everything you're going to need for this project. The first thing we're going to do is create templates for the bomber jacket. We are going to use a sweater to create the templates. The first template we are going to make is the one for the body piece. Take your sweater and fold in the sleeves. Place the sleeveless sweater over a piece of construction paper and trace the outline. You want to add a 1 inch seam allowance along the top and sides. Then you want to go ahead and cut out the body piece. Your body outline should look a bit like this. Next we need to create the front panel pieces. Place your body piece template over a piece of construction paper and outline it. After you outline the body piece, you can put that aside. With the outline of the body piece, you want to add a line down the middle. You also want to bring down the neckline by 3 to 4 inches. Cut around the outline and down the middle. You should end up with two front pieces like this. The next template we need to create is for the sleeves. Grab the sweater and fold in the sleeves. Outline the armhole of the sweater only. After that, you want to unfold the sleeve and outline it. You want to add a 1 inch seam allowance on both sides of the sleeve. The last template is totally optional. You don't need to make this to make the bomber jacket, but if you want to have a back piece on the back side of your bomber jacket, you want to create the next template. If you don't want to add a back panel to your bomber jacket, you can skip to the next section. To create the back panel template, you need to get your main body piece. Place the main body piece over another piece of construction paper and trace out the outline. Measure 6 inches down from the top of the outline. Draw out a straight line across the outline. Then you want to draw a line 1 inch above the first one. After you've drawn those two lines, you want to add another one in between those two lines at the 1 inch mark. Now you want to cut out the top half of the outline. Here's how your back panel template should look. Now you're all set for the next section. Now that the templates are made, we can now start making the bomber jacket. There are two parts to a bomber jacket, the outer part and the inner part. In this section, we are going to create the outer part. To start off, go and grab one of the front panel templates, the fabric you want to use for the outer part, pins, and a cutting tool. You want to lay the fabric down and double up on it by folding it over the fabric. Take your front panel template and place it over the fabric. Then you want to pin the template to the fabric. After that, you want to cut around the template. Once you finish cutting around the template, you can remove it. You should end up with two front panel pieces like this. Next, we need to cut out the bat for the front panel pieces. It's the same process as the front panel piece, so I'll briefly go over the process. Take the bat and double up on it by folding it over. Place the template over the bat, pin it into place, and cut out the outline. You should end up with two bat pieces like this. So the next part is totally optional. If you want to add two zippered pockets in front of the bomber jacket, you want to create two rectangles on the front panel pieces and sew in the zippered pockets. I won't be going over the process as I have an in-depth tutorial on how to make and sew on a zippered pocket. You can go over to that tutorial by clicking on the screen or if you're on mobile, check the video description. 
The next thing to do is sew together the front panel pieces to the corresponding bat pieces. You want to flip each front panel piece onto the wrong side of the fabric. Take each bat piece and place it right over. Then proceed to pin together the two pieces. Here's how the pinning should look. Take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch around the front panel pieces. After you sew the bats onto the front panel pieces, you want to hem the inner part of the panel piece by half an inch and do a straight stitch along it. Next you want to grab your body piece template. We are going to repeat the same process that we did for the front panel pieces. Grab the fabric that you want to use and lay it down. This time you do not need to double up on the fabric. Place the template over the fabric, pin it into place, and cut around the template. Now if you want to add a back panel to your bomber jacket, you want to go and grab your back panel template. Otherwise, you can skip this part. With the back panel template, you want to fold the bottom of the template at the half inch mark and place it on the body piece. Then you want to pin the template in place and cut along the bottom side of the template. You should end up with something like this. You can get rid of the top half. Put the bottom half of the body piece aside. Now grab the fabric that you want to use for the back panel piece. You want to unfold the bottom of the template and place it over the fabric. Pin it into place and cut around the template. Before we bond this piece back onto the body piece, we need to create a reference so we don't mess with the length. Get your back panel template and fold the bottom of it to the half inch mark. Place the template over the back panel piece and mark out the bottom. Here's how the back panel piece should look. Now we can sew together the back panel piece and the body piece. Have the right side of the body piece facing up and have the right side of the panel piece facing down. Proceed to pin the two pieces together. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and sew along the reference line that we drew on earlier. After you finish sewing the two pieces together, the next thing we need to do is press open the seam and sew down the raw edges. Grab your iron and press open the seam. Then you want to sew down both sides of the seam. After you finish that, you should end up with a body piece like this. Now we can cut out the bat for the body piece. Grab the bat. Place the body piece template over it, pin it into place, and cut around the template. Once you have finished that, we can now add the bat onto the body piece. Get the body piece and have the wrong side of the fabric facing up, and place the bat right over. Pin the two pieces together like this, then you can go to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch around the body piece to lock the two pieces together. The next piece we need to cut out is the sleeves. Grab the sleeve template and the fabric that you want to use. Lay the fabric down so the wrong side of the fabric is showing. Take the edge of the fabric and fold it over enough so we can cut out a sleeve template. Place the sleeve template along the fold of the fabric and proceed to pin it in place. After you pin it in place, you can proceed to cut around the template. You want to repeat this one more time for the second sleeve. Next we need to cut out the bats for the sleeves. Now grab your bat and one of your sleeves. Open up the sleeve and place it over the bat. Pin it into place and cut around the sleeve. You should end up with something like this. Repeat this one more time for the other sleeve. Now you should have both sleeve pieces with bat lining. Go to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch around the sleeve to secure the two pieces. After you finish sewing, the next thing we need to do is close up the sleeves. Take one of the sleeves and open it up. Make sure the right side of the fabric is showing. Take one of the sides and fold it over to match up with the other side. Then you want to pin the sides together. Repeat this one more time for the other sleeve. You should end up with something like this. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pins. The next thing we're going to do is add ribbed cuffs to the end of both sleeves. Grab your ribbed knit fabric and a measuring tape. You want to use the measuring tape to measure around your wrist. After you get your wrist measurement, you want to lay out your ribbed knit fabric. You want to double up on it by folding it downwards. The width of the cuff must be 3-4 to four inches, while the length of your cuff is your wrist measurement. Once you have that measured out, you can cut out your cuff. Use these same measurements to cut out the second cuff. After you have cut out both cuffs, 
You want to fold them over and pin the ends together. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and sew along the pinned area. Now we can add the cuffs onto the sleeves. Have the cuffs inside out and the sleeves right side up. You want the raw end of the cuff to point outwards and the folded side of the cuff to point towards the sleeve. Bring the cuff over the sleeve and make sure the end of the sleeve matches up with the raw end of the cuff. Now bring it to your sewing machine and stretch the sleeve and the cuff so it fits into the machine. Then you want to slowly straight stitch the cuff onto the sleeve. You want to take your time as it's really easy to mess up. Here's how your sleeves should look after you're all done. Next we're going to piece together the body piece with the two front panels. Grab the body piece and have it faced up so the right side is showing. Then take each front panel piece and face it down so the bat is showing. Now you want to go ahead and pin along these areas. Now you can take the piece to the sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned areas. Next we're going to add the sleeves to the body piece. Have the body piece inside out and the sleeves right side up. Bring the sleeve into the armhole of the body piece and proceed to line up the bottom seams. Then you want to pin around the armhole. Here's an example of how the pinning should look after you have pinned both sleeves. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch around the armhole. After you finish sewing on the sleeves, the next thing we need to do is add the collar piece. Grab your measuring tape and measure the length around the neckline. Now you want to grab your ribbed knit fabric and double up on it by folding it downwards. The length of the collar piece will be the neckline measurement that we got earlier and the width needs to be 3 inches. Once you have those measurements figured out, you want to cut out a rectangle using those measurements. Now you need to create a template for the collar piece. Using the same dimensions as earlier, you want to create another rectangle. After that, you want to make a curve like this on both ends. Once you finish that, you want to cut out the collar piece template. Once you have the fabric and template cut out, we can now make the collar piece. Place a curved part of the collar piece template along the open end of the fabric and proceed to cut along the template. Then you want to add pins along the open side of the collar. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area. After you finish sewing the collar shut, now we can sew it onto the bomber jacket. On the right side of the bomber jacket, you want to proceed to pin on the curved part of the collar piece. This part is pretty hard, so I suggest to take your time when you're doing it. When you're done, the pinning should look like this. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the neckline to sew on the collar piece. The last thing we need to do is add some ribbed knit fabric to the bottom of the bomber jacket. Go to the bottom of the bomber jacket and measure the length around it with a measuring tape. Once you got the length of the measurement, you want to cut a narrow piece of ribbed knit fabric. The length of the piece needs to be the length that we just got and the width needs to be about 8 inches. Once you have that cut out, you want to fold the length in half. Then you want to fold the bottom side of the fabric upwards about 3 inches. Proceed to cut along the fold. If you did everything correctly, you should end up with a long strip like this. Now we need to hem both ends of the strip. Go to each end and place pins along them. It should look like this. Take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area. After you have sewn the sides, you want to flip the strip inside out. Now we need to pin along the open side of the strip to close it. Here's how the pinning should look. Take it back to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the bottom side of the strip. After you finish closing up the strip, we can now sew it on to the bomber jacket. Lay the front side of the bomber jacket down like this. Grab the strip and have the sewn part of the strip match up with the bottom of the bomber jacket. Then proceed to pin them together. This is how the pinning should look. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area. Once you have sewn in the strip, you're officially halfway done. At this point, your bomber jacket should probably look like this. If it doesn't, you might need to reevaluate what you did. Yeah? Okay. But anyways, the next part is going to cover the inner part of the bomber jacket. So in this part, we are going to create the lining of the bomber jacket. 
The inner part is pretty repetitive, so I'll be speeding through the process. We are going to start by recreating each piece of the bomber jacket. You want to grab the fabric that you want to use for the lining and the body piece template. To speed up the process, you want to take your fabric and double up on it by folding it over. Place your template over the fabric and pin it into place. We need to make the body piece bigger than the original, so you want to create two pin lines that are one inch above and below the template. After you finish that, go ahead and cut around the template. When you're done with that, you should end up with two body pieces. Put one body piece aside and we're going to use the second body piece to create the two front panels. First you want to fold the body piece in half and crease along the fold. Use this crease as a reference to cut the body piece in half. After you cut the body piece in half, you want to go and grab your front panel piece template. Place the template in the center of the panel piece and pin it into place. Then you want to make a pin line one inch above the neckline. Afterwards, you can cut off the excess fabric. You can use the first piece as a template for the second piece. Bring the first piece over the second piece like this and cut off the excess fabric. Here's how the front panel pieces should look. Next we need to create the sleeves. Grab more of the lining fabric and the sleeve template. We need the sleeves to be longer than the original. So first things first, you want to take your fabric and double up on it by folding it over. Place the sleeve template on the fold of the fabric and pin it into place. At the end of the sleeve, you want to add a 1 inch pin line. After you finish that, you can proceed to cut around the template. After you finish one sleeve, you can use the first sleeve as a template for the second sleeve. Once you got both sleeves cut, the next thing to do is close them up. Open the sleeve up and fold it over so the wrong side of the fabric is showing. Then proceed to pin along the edge. Repeat this one more time for the other sleeve. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned line. Next thing to do is sew together the body piece with the two front panels. Have the right side of the body piece facing up and have the front panel piece face down. Then you want to pin along these areas. Take the piece to the sewing machine and do a straight stitch along each pinned area. After you finish sewing the body piece, we can now attach the sleeves. With the body piece inside out and the sleeves right side up, bring the sleeves into the armhole and match up the ends. Proceed to pin the two pieces together. After you pin one side, you want to repeat the same process for the other side. Once you have both sleeves pinned, it should look like this. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch around the armhole to attach the sleeves. The next thing we need to do is hem all the raw edges. Open up the lining piece and go to the bottom. You want to double fold the raw edges to hem it. Use pins to keep the hem in place. Here's how the pinning should look across the bottom side of the lining piece. Take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pins. After you finish hemming the bottom part, the next part we need to hem is the middle part. Again, you want to double fold the raw edges and use pins to keep them in place. Here's how the pinning should look. Again, take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned areas. After you finish hemming the middle part, now we need to hem the neckline. Once again, you want to double fold the raw edges and use pins as placeholders. The neckline is a bit tricky, so you want to take your time. You guessed it! You want to take it back to your sewing machine and straight stitch along the hem. The last part to hem is the sleeves. Bring the sleeves out from the inside of the lining piece. Like every other part, you want to double fold the raw edge and pin it. Oh shoot, deja vu? Bring it back to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area to hem the sleeves. Once you finish that, you're done with the lining piece. The next part is totally optional. If you want to add a mid strip to the bomber jacket, then continue watching. If you don't want to add a mid strip, you can skip this part. To make the mid strip, we first need to create the template. You want to grab one of the front panel templates. From the neckline to the bottom of the template, you want to record the length. Now grab a piece of construction paper and add a line with that length. Then you want to add two lines that are 3 inches wide. After that, 
you want to add another long line to close up the rectangle. On the top side of the rectangle, you want to create a curve like this. Now we can cut out the mid strip. Grab the fabric that you want to use as a mid strip, some bats, and the template. Starting off with the bat, you want to place the template over the bat and cut out the shape. With the fabric, you want to double up on it by folding it over. Then you want to pin the template over the fabric and cut out the shape. You should end up with two fabric strips and one bat strip. Now we can piece together the mid strip. Bring the bat over one of the mid strips and pin them together. Take the piece to the sewing machine and use a straight stitch to bond them together. After you've sewn those two pieces together, we can now add the second fabric piece. Bring the second fabric piece over the first piece like this and pin along this area. Then you want to bring it back to the sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pins. After you finish sewing the two pieces together, now we need to top stitch and hem the open edge. Flip the mid strip right side up and iron it down. Once you have flattened the strip, hem the raw edge and pin around the mid strip. It should look like this when you're done. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch around the mid strip. The next thing we are going to do is add the zippers. Grab the bomber jacket and the zippers that you want to use. To make the process a lot easier, you want to separate the zippers. To add the zippers, all you need to do is bring the zipper part under the bomber jacket and pin it into place. Here's how the pinning should look. Now if you made a mid strip, we are going to add that in now. It doesn't matter which side you decide to add the mid strip, so pick a side. Once you pick the side, you want to bring the mid strip under the flap of the bomber jacket. You want to take out the pins that are holding the zipper and repinning the area so it goes through both the zipper and the mid strip. This part is a bit tricky, so I advise you to take your time. Here's another view of the pinning. The final thing to do is attach the lining piece to the bomber jacket. Grab the lining piece and flip it inside out. Then you want to take your lining piece to your bomber jacket. First things first, you want to bring the sleeve of the lining piece into the sleeve of the bomber jacket. Pull it out of the bomber jacket sleeves like this. Now you want to pin the lining piece all the way around the inner part of the bomber jacket. For the neckline, you want to match the neckline of the lining piece to the neckline of the bomber jacket. Then pin them together. Make sure to cover the neckline seam. For the front panel pieces, you also want to use the lining piece to cover any raw edges. Then pin it into place. For the bottom of the bomber jacket, you want to use it to cover the seam of the ribbed knit. This is going to take some time, but you'll eventually get it done. Here's how the pinning should look. Now you can take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch around the bomber jacket to secure the lining piece. The last thing to do is sew the lining piece onto the sleeves. You want to bring the lining piece over the seam of the sleeve and pin it into place. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and carefully straight stitch the lining piece onto the bomber jacket. Once you're done with all the sewing, you can try out your new bomber jacket. The design for this bomber jacket is actually dedicated to my grandma. She had recently passed away, unfortunately. So rest in peace, grandma. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about the bomber jacket in the comment section below. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the tutorial. But that's the video. Hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching. And as always, remember to keep it daily. And I hope to see you guys soon. Peace.